Good morning. Uh, when Dave Knicki asked me to speak to you today, he asked that I talk to you about uh, oh, excuse me. RDO Equipment Company and, and uh, our dedication to training and, and uh, development and our succession planning for the future. Uh, as I hesitated to try to think of an excuse to try to get out of this today, because it is uh, next to golf is probably my worst. Uh, all right. As I hesitate to try to get out of this today, because uh, next to golf, it's my worst uh, skill is public speaking. Uh, he reminded me of something that Ron Offit said over a decade ago. He told him that it was a, it was about a point in our company's history where he employed a lot of leaders that uh, he describes had shiny shoes. Uh, they had no passion uh, for our industry or understanding about our business, uh, but they thought they did. A time when we had acquired many locations but outgrew our people and it cost us dearly. Now don't let me confuse you, I'm not one of those shiny shoe uh, people that Ron was talking about. Unfortunately, I uh, left my wife to pack for me today with this tie. Uh, but before I share with you what we're doing in the area of recruiting, developing, and retaining tomorrow's leaders, I think it's important to uh, quickly look back at uh, our company's history and the lessons we learned along the way. 45 years ago in 1968, Ron Offit purchased his first John Deere egg dealership in Castleton, North Dakota. The story is legendary amongst our employees. Uh, however, I don't think it's the fact that he had to sell farmland or potato warehouses or borrow the last $10,000 from his grandmother to uh, pay for the dealership. Or the fact that uh, the first week in business he had to go uh, around to all the customers and ask them to pay, for their, uh, pay on their parts accounts in advance just so he had enough money to cover payroll. I think uh, what kind of stands out about the story to uh, our employees, especially our managers, is that early on Ron learned that he wasn't a good store manager and he learned that uh, he needed to go out and hire the best store manager he could find, train him, and pay him very well and that model uh, worked very well for him for many years. During the 1970s and 80s, RDO became one of Deere's first multi-store dealers and grew to eight stores in the Dakotas and Minnesota. In 89, we entered the construction business by purchasing four construction stores in North Dakota, and by 1990, the company has grown to 16 egg and construction stores. The rapid growth was driven by this same strong store manager model that uh, served Ron so well for those years prior. Uh, he hired experienced managers, like I said, paid them well, and, and gave them stock in the company to retain them long term. Then came the 1990s. When our company uh, had explosive growth, we uh, acquired 28 more construction and egg stores. Ron turned the reins over of the company for the first time to uh, someone else uh, who served as president, and Ron retained the chairman role as the company prepared to go public. As most of you know, RDO went public in 1997. What happens next uh, is affectionately uh, called our public years. Uh, it's the most expensive lesson Ron and, and RDO has ever learned. We outgrow, outgrew our people, but not our checkbook. We purchased stores just because we could. We ran out of those strong managers that made us so success, successful to that point. We had to hire uh, corporate leaders, those shiny shoe guys I talked about earlier. We promoted employees into management roles uh, that they weren't ready for and went out and hired just about everybody with industry experience, uh, whether they were washed up or not. When we bought a store, we'd send out a team uh, from the corporate office to train on the processes and expectations for a few days. But that was it. The new store was expected to become RDO just by us waving our uh, magic checkbook uh, as we left. What happened next would make a, a great horror movie or comedy, I guess depending on whether you were an investor or an employee at the time. Uh, the storyline uh, included Deer telling us we couldn't buy any more stores. Uh, used combines were saturating the market and we had that market cornered. Uh, the values dropped about 20% uh, overnight, and the stock market analysts wanted both growth and profitability. Those greedy bastards. <laughs> and how can I forget? We had a corporate office in Fargo full of shiny shoe people with no understanding of what the company was about. Uh, 
They uh, completely ignored the culture that grew the company from uh, that one store in 1968 to the mega dealer it was at the time. With the increased pressure to raise the stock price and satisfy those bastards, I mean stock analysts, uh, we did what any company with shiny shoed leaders would do. We went out of our area of expertise. We bought truck dealerships. It's got to be just like running a used, uh, equipment dealership, right? Who cares that we got no one to run them, no one that understands our culture? Who cares that the only thing worse at that time than having a lot full of used combines was having a lot full of over-the-road trucks? And by the way, we had that market cornered as well. Uh, you know, uh, what, what buying them what did is gave us the uh, revenue growth that the stock market and those analysts wanted. But how about uh, profitability? Well, of course, those uh, shiny shoes in Fargo decided we could quit spending money on training our people. We could let our facilities and uh, service vehicles deteriorate. Who cares about the long term? As long as those greedy analysts are happy and the bonuses are big enough to buy a new pair of shiny shoes, uh, let's focus on the short term, one quarter at a time. Well, you probably know how this horror slash comedy ends. Uh, in 2003, as Mike talked about, the Offit family took the company back private and set us out on a new but familiar course. A few years before the company went back private, Ron yanked the reins from uh, his shiny shoed president and gave them to his youngest daughter, Christy. She was running the Midwest Ag Division at the time and, like himself, was embarrassed and, and angry over what had happened to our once great company. She changed the direction from striving to be the biggest deer dealer in the world to being the best. She vowed we'd never again outgrow our people or lose sight of our stakeholders. Notice I said stakeholders, not shareholders. There's a big difference in our perspective. She helped develop this RDO stakeholder wheel to remind leadership and our employees of those core focuses, or those core values and stakeholders, so we never lose focus again. From that day forward, the principal stakeholders provided a basis for all our management decisions, employees, customers, manufacturer partners, owners, and our community communities we do business in. The past decade has seen slow but steady and strategic growth for RDO. We opened or acquired 16 new locations, but more importantly, we have turned down as many acquisitions as we have pursued, something that would have been unheard of in our public days. Most also importantly, uh, every one of those 16 new locations had RDO trained and experienced managers working there from day one. We knew that processes can be learned, but culture must be instilled and fostered. That is only possible by transplant, transplanting current leaders into the new location. <coughs> So how did we go about developing this bench strength of strong managers and just, just as important managers that were willing to relocate, sometimes across the country? We made continuous improvement of focus for every employee. We had management sit down with every employee and create a, tra a training plan. From the wash bay guy to the receptionist to the technician that was almost at retirement age, everyone has a plan and management is held, held accountable that the plans are executed on. We've been recognized by Deer for uh, spending two to three times their average dealer on our training. We develop career paths for parts and service employees. Every quarter those employees sit down with their manager and discuss where they're at on that career path, what they need to do to hit the next level and the impact it will have on their pay. They also have conversations about future role changes the employee might be, list, might be interested in. What we found out by asking those questions and having the one-on-one -on -one conversations about where they want to go in their career, we have identified people with the right training and the development plan We've, they have grown on to great success. We've established what is called RDO University, which consists of management development programs, including the Management Institute and the Management Trainee Program. The Management Institute consists of 15 to 20 current and future leaders in the organization. It's a two-year program that replicates an MBA curriculum, including capstone projects that have a company-wide impact. They've got quarterly multi-day meetings uh, and multi-day classes and lots of homework that is done on their own time and turned in monthly. The graduates are ready for uh, a GM or higher position and, and have all agreed in advance to relocate if necessary. The management training program focuses on recent grads. It's an 18-month full-time course that includes classroom training and rotations in the field. Most of these employees are new to RDO. On completion of uh, this 18-month program, they're ready for a department manager role 
and have also agreed to relocate. Other areas of leadership of de development include our customer engagement in initiative, which involves regional training of every employee on customer expectations, our differentiators, and silo busting. Our learning portal is an online university of 100 class, hundreds of classes that we purchase or develop uh, for any employee to take, whether it be a technician taking computer training or a forklift safety classes for the new employee to cover it all. <coughs> People review. Our people review process uh, has been a huge factor in our success in developing our bench strength. Our managers take all the information they uh, gathered from our one-on-one -on -one conversations. From that, we validate which employees are ready for advancement and we uh, set out on the plan. These last few slides I just quickly threw in there because Kim said I had to have 10 slides and I didn't know what to put in there. But uh, just to quickly tell you, uh, our employee count today is over 1,800. If you think about that, two-thirds of them are technicians uh, and parts people, which uh, really creates issues when it starts talking about succession planning and training and something that uh, with the partnership of our manufacturer and, and uh, focus on ourselves, we've been able to uh, get it done. Uh, here you see the geographical uh, diversity uh, we have as an organization. It's great when uh, there's weather situations like a drought to kind of spread the, the risk, but it uh, can be a huge disadvantage when you're trying to get somebody from San Diego, California to move to Hazen, North Dakota. Uh, we've got 14 locations in Russia and Ukraine. Haven't convinced anybody to move uh, from San Diego to Russia either. Uh, we've experienced some, uh, some leverage in, in expanding our training programs over there, but uh, it's been limited success. And finally, our newest partnership is in Australia with the Vanderfield organization. We're going to have 15 locations uh, there by next month. And we see lots of opportunity to leverage our training over there and to bring employees back and forth and, and uh, help develop each other. Believe it or not, it's a lot easier to get employees to sign up to go to Australia than it is uh, Russia or Ukraine. Uh, in closing, I'd like to thank you for having the patience uh, to listen to me this morning. And I hope that uh, you're able to pick up an idea or two to bring back. Uh, the most important lesson, regardless if you're a single store operation or a mega dealer, is don't grow your organization based on your balance sheet or your manufacturer's desire or approval for you to grow. Grow your organization when you have the people ready for the challenge and opportunity. Thank you.